Photoshop is quite an advanced piece of software. Most people use it for simple things like editing photos or designing a logo. But you can even go into things like editing videos or using 3D. Today, we'll be looking at using 3D. Now, 3D isn't necessarily a tool that can be used for designing a house and that being a 3D model and then you can 3D print that. It's not that type of 3D. It's more the 3D of 3D text or 3D objects that get saved as a picture so you can use 3D into your advantage of logo design. You'll probably most commonly use 3D text, which is what I'll be showing you now. Okay, so once you open Photoshop, just have to wait for it to load, um, I'm sorry for the terrible audio quality and video quality. I had to downscale the video quality because or else it will be all laggy and you won't be able to see what I'm saying. So I figure you can still see what I'm doing. You may not be able to read some of the writing, but it's actually going to be smooth. Because this computer is the only computer that I have that has the um, third latest version of Photoshop on it, which supports 3D. And it's pretty slow as well so yeah it's gonna be pretty clunky at times but yep and as for the audio quality i'm actually recording into a separate sound card a bad quality sound card because this computer doesn't have a um headphone input so yes that is why it has that buzz um it wouldn't usually be like this but anyway um you're gonna be greeted with the welcome screen you may not so anyway, just hit any, you know, default Photoshop size, whatever you want. And once you're in here, I'm already in the 3D preset. You want to be in the 3D preset. Because that makes your life ten times easier. And now, when you're in 3D, you're going to see the, the properties panel pop up, as well as the 3D panel. Now the 3D and the properties panel work in work with each other. Once you select a 3D layer or a 3D ob or, or a 3D object in the 3D tab, the properties for that object will appear in the properties panel. So if you want to do 3D text, just simply write what you want. Make it the right size. And the right color. And now once you have your 3D text up here, up the top you're going to notice that there's a 3D icon here. Once you select that, it'll convert it to a 3D object. It's going to take a while if you have a slow computer like I do. Anyway, so you have your 3D object here and you can rotate around it. But one thing that I've instantly done wrong here, which I did without thinking, was when I moved it, I moved it on the 3Ds on the actual logo itself. That means that when you're moving around it, you're going to move the actual logo. If you don't want that to happen, you have to make sure you move it on the current view tab there. So I'm just going to hit Control Z to go back to how it was. Now if I go to current view, I can view it as if it was the camera going around it, not the actual text moving. Now if you want to go... Now if you want to set it to your default view, at the bottom or somewhere during here you should find a default camera if you just click on that it will rotate it back to the default camera now if you want to cast a shadow in a different way or if you don't want to have a shadow if you go under infinite light one 
you can see as I move it around, it acts as if the sun was facing a different position. You can see there's a shadow as well on the base there. Let me just get rid of that so that I can show you how to do that. So select your 3D text here and then in the properties panel now, now let me just dock that there and get it so that it actually shows the properties to actually change the shadow there you're going to want to go select the text find the box here where it says cast shadows if you untick that then it won't have the shadow there. I'm probably going to leave the shadow there. Nope. But that ticks. Okay. Now, also, if you want to see how deep the text is, you can do that by selecting the extrusion depth. So as I rotate around this to get a better angle, reselect a 3D logo, go on to where it says extrusion depth, and you can change that. So I'll put it maybe there. And then to go back, just hit default camera like I said before. And that's all good. Now you're probably thinking, what if I want to have a contour or a bevel? Or if you just want the text to have a texture, a realistic texture. That is actually super easy to do. Once you select your 3D logo, you can go under this third tab where it has contour and change the way that looks. Now you're going to notice at first it doesn't really do much. And that's because we haven't really had we don't really have the contour enabled. Now the way this graph works as well is it's as if this was a cutaway of it and this is the way it's being viewed. Now let's just hit OK there and make sure that we can actually enable the contour. And another way that you can change the bevel is to change this width here and the angle. And as we zoom in, you can see there's that contour. very slow and clunky as I said before. Okay, I'm just going to quickly get rid of that. No, I, well, control Z. Control Z is your best friend. Close that. Now that we have the bevel, the bevel and the contour worked out, to actually add texture to it, you go under the 3D logo front inflation. And they have these preset. They have these presets here. So there's a white, a blue, a brown, different textures, etc. You can go all the way down, and then onto the settings, you can change the settings. You can select the new material. You can select the way it views. You can yeah. You have a whole stack of options there. So say I want sort of a brown woody log kind of texture. If I select that, wait for it to load, it will display that there. Now let me just zoom in and see how it has that. Now if you want to change the texture of the bevel, underneath the front inflation there'll be a front bevel material inflation. And that is set to black at the moment. But we can go down and let's say I want it to be a blue. And then now that's a blue. Now the extrusion material is the depth of it. And let's make that the same wood the same wood texture as we had on the front. Now, now the if you want to change the back bevel, that can be done as well. 
I will just change that to the same that I had to the uh, to the front bevel, that shiny blue color, and then the back inflation, so the very back of the text, I'll make that the wood color. There. Okay, so here we've got a pretty neat 3D logo. Now, looking at this, it looks pretty good, and this is the basic idea of what you need to know for it. Now, there is a whole lot more features in 3D, and once I actually learn all the features, then I'll do an in-depth tutorial, which can be... Well, it could be even close to an hour long. This is just going to be a quick 10 to 20 minute video. I don't actually know how long this video will be though. So this is a pretty cool 3D design. And now what I'll be doing is showing you how to do 3D objects. Okay, once you have opened your new document, the way that you would create a 3D object is by creating your shape under a shape layer. So once you got the site and select the shape layer, select the rectangle tool. Or if you want to make a 3D circle, you can do that. But I'll just keep it as a rectangle as default. And if you want it to be square, just hold down shift key. And make that a square. Now it's selected as a path. Paths are quite good. They can also be quite confusing. I am just going to make it as a shape, since that is what most of you will be using. And shapes are still shapes are still a bit advanced. If you want to get really simple, you could just do pixels. Now I'm going to make the fill black, and I'm actually going to do this on a whole new layer. That'll make it a bit easier. And now that's the black, and we have we have a stroke option here, which I'll just disable. Now that you have your 3D object here, under the 3D menu, you're going to notice that there is options here. So there's create a new 3D object source from selected layers. So if you have multiple layers that are 2D and you want to convert them to 3D, you can do that. If you have a work path, now a work path is what I was saying before, how up here you have paths. You have a current selection. So say you're using the quick selection tool and you selected a part of an object, you could do a selection or you could import it from a file. Since the rectangle is on one separate layer from the background, I'll just do a selected layer. Now it's got 3D postcard, 3D extrusion, or mesh from preset. I'm just gonna do a 3D extrusion. That looks all good, hit create. And soon enough, you're gonna find a square cube. So here you have your square cube. And the idea behind creating textures and bevels and contours is all actually exactly the same as on text. So if you go under here, what I didn't mention before is you have these shape presets. Now these have the basic presets that you might be needing if you want a a chiseled effect or a rounded effect, you can actually go ahead and select some of these. So if I select that, it's going to make it look like a rounded square. But at the same time, they're limited in that it won't make it so that there is actually an extrusion. It's just like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control Z until it brings me back to what I had before. Right, so this is what I had before. 
And I'm just going to leave the shape preset by itself. And the extrusion depth as well. Now, under the bevel and all that, we can go ahead and change that. Let's make that roughly there. The angle is 40, 45 degree angle is usually pretty good. Now, as you can see, we can make it rounded, we can make it bulgy. You can do a lot with this contour editor. I'm just going to make it like that. It's quite a rigid effect. And now we can change the texture the same way. Now this is a very basic way of using the presets, but this will still give you a great effect. Change the bevel. Make the extrusion the same wooden sort of texture or dirt texture. The back bevel, I actually do not have a back bevel enabled, but that's going to be the same. Actually, no, sorry, um, do it to what I had before, that blue texture, if I do end up putting a back bevel on there, and then a back, just the back itself is going to be that dirt sort of log wood texture, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Keep on calling it that. Okay, so here you have a cube with a bevel on it. And this is pretty basic. Now next 3D tutorial, I'm, I'm going to be going in and showing you how to do bevels on these sides and on the back. But this is just a quick, simple video of some of the basics that you can do with 3D. So I hope you found that tutorial helpful. The next tutorial, the part two, will be a lot more in-depth and will have some of the advanced features. I have to go ahead and try and learn those advanced features before I can actually film the video. But I hope you found that helpful. The part two will be edited in so it's here when it comes out. If you thought... If you found it helpful, drop a like and see you in the next video.